Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. I am Lily. Today we are continuing our playthrough of the Knowledge Patch and this time we are going to do it in the Neolithic era. So we left our tribe Hobbledyhoy after 1500 years in the French Brittany back in the Mesolithic timeline and Hobbledyhoy is now containing the ascendants of all these hardcore pioneers. We have traveled in time to help these ascendants of our original tribe to survive another era this time, the Neolithic. Let's go see what we have to work with. Right, we are in Neolithic timeline, we are in autumn, we are also going to the same place that our ancestors settled in the Mesolithic. So this time this uh, tribe, the Hobbledyhoy tribe, has migrated back after having been basically all over Europe, I'm pretty sure. And that leader looks fantastic, by the way. Um, I can see that the uh, architecture is a little bit pop pop. But you know, we are used to working with that, aren't we girls? We have worked hard for centuries, for millennia, to build our architecture. We know what we're doing, seriously. Come on, ladies, we got this. Right, we have 21 people, sure. Uh, I have seen more, but that's also later in the Neolithic, and we have, ooh, quite a few girls, quite a few females, that means more babies. I don't mind that at all. So, this looks good. This looks good. A bit of work on the architecture, but hey, we know what we're doing. Let's, um, yeah, yes, he's fantastic. Let's get going. Chu Hoi, find the place we were with our ancestors. Maybe we can find some of their ruins, some of the leftovers of their one Mesolithic men here that they almost erected in time before they had to migrate. Who knows? We shall see. Right. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope they have a lot of good stuff here that the seed is good. Okay, so the first thing that I see is, without a doubt, all the tall grass and you do know what that means that means more reed and more fiber this is excellent i also see the rivers having tons of fiber and tons of reed this is good so we also have forked rivers like it's, it's like having three rivers with fish with reed with fiber lots of fiber with lots of reed oh and that's the ocean excellent oh i can see hazelnuts yep they're very distinctive from any distance really they're kind of like sharp yellow when you're far away. When you come closer, they turn more a normal color. And I see tons of nettles. I see, I see potential here, girls. We can do this. Let's just uh, jump into it and chalk down the campfire as the focal point. Let's do that. We lack quite a bit in a few of the knowledges to get everything we want. But you know, <coughs> hard work is, is part of, of everyday life back in those days. It, it is what it is. And the... Let's bite our teeth together and let's go going. Um, don't like too much to start the uh, the Mesolithic men here. It's uh, <clears throat> certainly available for us. We can see it, so we know we can build it if we just get a bit more skill. It also means that some of our um, architecture people have uh, either migrated from us or they have uh, died without teaching everyone everything they know. Well, that is one of the things that can happen if you don't teach your skills to the next generation. The skills basically die with you. And if you are the max knowledge holder in the tribe, mm -mm -mm, not good. Let's just get the policies done. Oh, that's really nice. I think I'll let the very young ones, like the four-year-olds and stuff, and those above 65-ish, or is it 67, not work. They can just rest and uh, kids grow stronger and uh, elder well it is the end of their life bit by bit is what it is I, I rarely touch resting i sometimes if i don't have any kids put it on one because the grown-ups does not seem to suffer so much as the kids do if you're rationing labor time uh, 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 mm -mm, never mess with that because that is such a, a quick way to kill your tribe absolutely but this guy this dude is great he is great he's smart he is determined and of course he's very charismatic charismatic so yeah he's uh, he's feeling good this means that he will convince the entire tribe that 
You can work till the day you die. You're all good. You can work with little food. You can work 24 hours. You're still good. This is the charisma and what the leader can do. But of course, he's pending his own uh, his own um, traits, of course. But he only has good traits, you know. So this is good. <laughs> this is really good. Right. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to get down some storage areas just uh, place them here by this one that'll be fine as usual we need six even though we're not going to collect everything it's always a good idea to have everything down already and sorted then you don't have to pre-plan any space that you leave open so let's uh, get all these in place let's see if I can do it right this time I tend to mix and trick them up and then I discover it later and I'm completely shocked that I could be so senile. Yeah. <laughs> Happens way too often. There you go. I have no idea what this last one is supposed to be. <laughs> oh god, you can't take me anywhere. Let me see stones. Da -da -da. Oh, the wood. Got it, got it. <laughs> got the locks. <laughs> Maybe there's hope for me after all. We need to change the name of the tribe because we are hobbledy hoy. There you go. So this is our ancestors. Look, he's got three daughters. No wonder he's so strong. He got these girls keeping on him on his toes constantly throughout his life. <laughs> Cannot argue with that. Right, those are the big material storage areas let's do the smaller ones and also the crafter should we just have them fairly close to each other I'm going to give them benches anyway and when you know when you get the the um, roundhouses they will go into the roundhouse to do their crafting because they really enjoy doing that yeah I'll just oh for heaven's sake Lily, just chalk down the flipping storage areas let's do is it eight yeah it's eight See if I can get these right then. Gosh. You know there are times where you are so slow in what you normally do so quickly. Mm. Okay. Let's do this. Let's just get all of them down. Love the emblem by the way. It's a sun, isn't it? Lovely sun. Yep. Those you maybe I need bigger ones for the heights and the leather. They tend to take quite some space after a while, and then your prey dies out, and suddenly you have all the space you need because there are no more leather. It does make sense, doesn't it? Right now, we just need to start the groups. Okay, let's go to the groups to three oh, I'll have three of those and no there ain't gonna be no goddamn wood choppers group ain't two three four five yeah a bit demon talk as well I spoke a little bit of my own language there <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine calls it the Lily the demon talk <laughs> <laughs> right so let's do the crafters so you two, no, one or two, no, I'll leave you alone. You are going to do those only because there always seems to be a certain lack of fine sticks in the start. And you are going to do those only because they also seem to be lacking a lot in the start. And um, the main group will be two and you will be doing the ropes and everything else so 10 ropes I don't really need a ton of those but I'll do 10 of those as well and those I actually do want 20 and those I don't need more than max 4 and those I will take 10 as well uh, we are already 20 plus so it's okay to have a little bit more I'll put one fisherman for now 
and just see how it goes. Hunters, you will only go for the boar. Let's have a look and see what we've got first. <clears throat> yeah, of course we have boars. Yes, horses. No, we didn't have those. And of course not the goats, because there's just not enough mountains around here. Now, let's see how many dogs do we have. We have four. Uh, that's a male, a large male. Damn. Look at the size of that dude. He's big and he's... Uh, let me see... Very big. Yeah. I can tell. Oh, that's a baby. Oh, it's a puppy. Puppy. They are so cute. Why are they so cute? They are so pretty. Where's your mommy? Oh, you came without a mama. Because the tribe is newly started. So, And that's also a male. Oh, what was the baby? The baby was... A female. Okay, that's good. At least there's one female then. And then the uh, last one is also a, a male, but it is small. It's very small. Right, so at least we have um, different genders on the animals, which is uh, on the dogs, which is excellent. Now, back to the boars and only one. So there. Ta-da! Right, now we need the gatherers to be sorted. Let's do some of the <coughs> more difficult foods. Our oh, foods are not so super staples. And <coughs> need to start roughly 20 on those, I think. Because we are 20 plus in the tribe. And with all the females we've got, I anticipate there will be quite a few births within the year. At least two, perhaps even three if we're lucky. Uh, let me see, and you can do the staples. Ta ta ta, minus the clams. No, that should not have any limits. You need to pick it up the second the animal dies, otherwise it will go to waste. It is um, always a good idea to never limit either your pelts or your red meat. And you can do the common materials. I'm going to use four for that one. Ta-da! So we don't need more than 50 of those. To, I can't type. 50 of those to start with. I always like to have these high and these to cover at least one large straw hut until it's only maintenance numbers left. Um, and you will do some of the stones. Do and do. You can also do a little bit of log collection as well if you don't use a uh, oh no, no, a 14 for if you don't use a lumberjack the uh, tribe can pick up logs from the ground from fallen trees they can crop some tree stumps and stuff so you will always have access to logs but of course there will come a time where you still need to to do it anyway so you can be too so I'm also going to make uh, a straggler group with open work spots so that when they are out of work in any of the groups they will just uh, go to the straggler group and do kind of like the, the leftover chores or uh, some of the um, tasks that I want more gatherers to do or uh, more more stuff I want to come into the tribe basically. What are you? Uh, yeah, you can do those two. So this one is often the group that needs the most help so actually no I'm gonna put them on three it's enough with three isn't it don't need to exaggerate so this is going to be my struggle group and for now they are going to help out with fiber only and that's it for now because we don't have to have the read out immediately we can wait a bit till we get more a little bit more people okay so that that's the groups, right? Yup. Okie dokie. Are we ready to put on speed? We should be. Let's do this. I do like when these rivers are a little bit wonky like this. I think it adds to the charm. It's nothing wrong with having rivers like this. I mean, I have been walking in the northern Norway, Vita, and uh, there are plenty rivers who have 
even sharper bends than this. You know, the, the, the level, how they bend. It's all fine. Oh god, look at all the reed, look at all the the fibre. We can probably stay here for 150 years. Shall we stay here for 150 years? Shall I go put the kettle on? I could always do with a good cuppa, no matter timeline, no matter where I am, no matter what I do. <laughs> oh, what's up? Oh, that was a stone. It looked weird. Let's see. Look at all the resources. Seriously. I mean, they weren't kidding when they say that they have increased stuff. When they increase, they increase. Okay, let's get back to camp. Let's get up the tanners pretty quickly. I have those done. We can put those over here. Then people can sit and relax as well after they've done a bit of tanning. Uh, let's get up the windows. Have a look. The, the the hunting is exceptional. That's probably him. He's the knowledge holder. So, oh, well, he's fishing because another hunter with skills has taken the place. But that's fine. You know why? Because she will learn really, really quickly up until the max level that the tribe has, which is held by the tribe leader. And then when one month passes her green which she is working on now will become blue and that means she will get close to the level that the highest holder already has meaning when he passes away she will carry on the legacy of the hunting skills and then others will learn from her so that's exceptionally good i love that and she will also learn really quickly they tend to swap around a lot to to learn new skills and to improve the ones they have to reach the specialist and the skills that the specialist has so uh, it's quite common that they do that quite common to start with but you know as as they learn things it, it calms down so they're not gonna keep gonna keep jumping for for years ahead but they tend to to want to go and learn more from others as well so they do roam a little bit in the groups which is fine totally fine um yeah you need to clear that's good that's good that they do that i'm just so impressed by my leader he is fantastic where did he go there he is and of course eating raw meat even though there are nuts and mushrooms and let's have a look are you serious we have three pregnancies already we basically just landed seriously we have slept like two Two sleeps, two or three, this is perhaps the third or fourth, and we have three pregnancies. I told ya, with all these girls, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> many, many babies. I don't mind that, but I think, I think I will be a little bit careful with accepting too many migrants, because we want to stay here long term, don't we? We want to stay 10 plus years, and if I am going to make any of my wonders or any of my projects, I think we're going to need at least 10 years, depending on how high I build them, because I'm going to try to do different uh, levels, different heights on the, uh, on the stones. And, you know, I do need to get myself to build the big ones as well, the ones with inscription that are carved because they will be huge in comparison, won't they? Because they are the original really big ones. And I think I will make them in the middle so that they can always be seen. I have no idea what I'm going to make, but it is going to be a, a, a small lily henge. Not authentic with the proper um, stone henge, so it's just going to be a small lily henge, which is fine. So there's that. Okay, so let's get loads of those. We can chuck up a ton of, of peltats. That's good. Yep. Let's see how my crafters are doing. Maybe I should do more. Make more space for them. We'll always just uh, take it down when we're done building absolutely everything. 
Let's see. Yeah, she's the one who will try to reach the level that the Max Tribe Holder has, which is the fabulous leader. I think I'm going to rename them the leaders. I used to call them, what did I used to call them? Boss lady and boss dude. I'll just call this guy ultimate dude. He's the ultimate dude, isn't he? <laughs> it fits him. He looks really cool. This is luck to put the crown on top of the head instead of to the side. I hope they don't do that. That'll be too cheesy. <laughs> I hope the devs don't change it. Please don't change it. <laughs> I do love their hair. It's so cool to see. Um, the hairstyles. We do have a little bit of freedom with the hairstyles, don't we? Because not everything is provable or disprovable, to put it like that. So it's kind of a little bit artistic freedom going on with some of the hairstyles. Which is fine and dandy. That's a very nice hairstyle. I really like that one. Well, she's just started... Uh, learning toolsmithing and then she went over to do something else okay not patient enough fine all good what else do people have of skills um oh he's just a kid so he won't have too much yeah she has got the woodworking she's woodworking and you can see she's quite green uh, i've done a lot of uh, work on the toolsmithing so that's good that's really good she uh, pretty quickly reached the max so that's excellent and yeah she's working on hunting and she's been doing some tanning you can see she's been working on the tanners because she just achieved the skill and then she just achieved also tool smithing because I have four spots so they will swap around but that's fine and dandy and he just learned uh, woodworking and he also learned tool smithing and he's a, um, a good learner he also has I think he is the yeah, he is the, the, the tribe holder for max knowledge in uh, architecture, so he I need to keep him happy. He has good grades. He is really stubborn though, so I can't mess around too much, otherwise he will leave me. He probably has really high uh, will. Yeah, he's 151. If I mess up anything now, he will leave. He will say, F you, and off he goes. He will not accept any BS. Right. We have... Um, Mm -mm -mm. Six crafters now. That's quite a lot of crafters. It's because they are so slow on the ropes. So I have prioritized a few of the items to only have one person doing them. So they are only doing that one thing in order to get enough to create the other things. Um, so that one has 12 oh yeah i put it on 20 didn't i i think it's on 20 yeah yeah mm -mm 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 -mm. got it got it and those yeah i have 10 of those and 65 okay we can we just need another 10 and then we can start making uh proper reed hearts i'm gonna uh, chuck down oh no never mind we only have three ropes mm. so that means that hopefully at least one of these with weaving skill she has weaving skill yeah of course she's crafting rope with that weaving skill that is fantastic yep yeah. good girl keep going anna good girl anna Her hair is beautiful oh are you sitting all the way over there <laughs> to do your crafting well they do want to sit so there's that and they uh, yeah, need to get up the um, roundhouse so they come up so they can sit there. And also I've noticed, uh, I noticed this a while ago, I just forgot to talk about it. Then instead of now the tools just laying on the ground, you know, chalked around, they are actually uh, neatly put in baskets now. So that is really cool that they do that. So everything is in baskets instead of just laying around, floating around, and that's nice. Look at the bus. They look so real, don't they? That meat looks disgusting, by the way. 
but it's probably authentic. Probably. What's that though? That's also... Oh, that looks like bifaces. Where's that? This? Oh! They're okay. They disappeared in front of my face, like... Whoosh whoosh! Like candy on a kid's table on a Saturday. Boom! All gone. <laughs> Right, um, five robes. Yeah, I have to wait till ten. How is my Fisher dude? He is seriously. Are you gonna, you know, I'm gonna put on two fishermen because I can't have that. He is being max in so many um, knowledges without sharing. Because in order to get the level that he has in fishing, He's, he seems to be the max knowledge holder for fishing as well, this ultimate dude. So he needs to share the space with someone else. He needs to, to let others uh, try to do it as well. Unfortunately, we players, we can't decide specifically where the specialist or the knowledge holders should go. So we just have to make sure that we have enough vacancies so that others are learning. You can see this guy is already good on his way to learn. Oh my goodness, all the birds and the migrants. Oh, she has lovely hair. I'll take her because she has lovely hair. See? <laughs> I'll happily take you too. Welcome to Hobbledy Hoy. The next generation. Yep. <laughs> Maybe we should start a tribe and call it Voyager. And have my, my tribe leader be Captain Janeway. Try to make it their way home oh my goodness i think and that's going to be the theme for the ice age uh, surviving doggerland video series i'm going to do on twitch i'm going to stream live on twitch it's going to be an absolute nightmare because i'm going to laugh all the time at all the silliness that i do and whenever someone says something funny i'll be laughing for three days it's ridiculous i need to put down some ground rules nobody is allowed to make me laugh because if i start i can't i can't function <laughs> It's just laughing all the way. I can't even talk when I'm laughing. Just these odd sounds coming out. <laughs> oh, dude. I have so many ideas, so many things I want to do, so many things I want to try. But uh, there are only 24 hours in the day. So there's that. How many things? Oh, maybe I should get some baskets. I actually should. Instead of babbling along, I should get up some dryers. I'm not being very efficient, am I? Okay, let's get a dryer there. And a dryer there. Look, it's going to be pretty. Ish. There you go. And they take two rubs each. That's fine. Well, I should have done this a bit earlier, I think. Make sure that we don't lose uh, anything to the boars or to the wild dogs. Well, the boars are shameless. They will come no matter the dogs. They tend to only want to come into your camp when they are um, in a pack and not only one or, or two individuals. Yep. <clears throat> I'm going to see who else is fishing. Okay, you are. But you're both um, aging, so you need to give space to the young ones. And I'm also going to do that with, uh, with the hunters, so that more than one is uh, learning the skill. She's old. Uh, no, she's not old. <laughs> she's not old, so she, she has many years left that she can learn, and she's young. No, where did she go? Oh, she came back. No, that was someone else. Anna, you've been here before. So you already have the skill. Um, and you... Yeah, they all have the skill. It's just that they need to... They need to stay alive so everyone can learn it. Oh, you're done now. Okay, so you are going to be... Fish, 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 fish. And this one still need... Oh, this one is the meat. And that one is fish. Then it's only raw meat left for that one. Okay. Oops. Right, that's fine. Let's do raw meat. 
so nice. Okay, so now I have three babies. Look, three idle, three babies, three children, three elderly. All good. All good. Okay, so pits are down and I'm probably going to need quite a few more. And I do want one of these as well. I'll just throw it over here by the tree. Because I want to cut the tree, the tree down. It should stay. I like it when it's uh, a little bit cozy with the forest and stuff around the camp. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, is there any report yet? Yeah, so there's a little bit green on the toolsmithing. I cannot see an improvement on hunting. I cannot see on fishing. There's green on weaving. Cannot. Oh, there's a little bit on stone on woodworking. Yeah, it's it's really difficult to see if you only have a little bit of of uh, uh, knowledge managed per month. It it's uh, a very light green color. So it's not so easy to see. And the month after, then it will turn blue. And if you're slacking for a long, long time, things will oh, turn red. Now we have medium benches. Let's do them benches. I'll do your... The, um, I think I'm going to place them a little bit angled. And uh, not too close. People do still like to sit a bit away, uh, sit around the fireplace, and sometimes if the uh, benches are too close, it looks like they're kind of sitting on the ground in the bench. So it's a little bit of clipping going on, which is not so easy to get rid of. And we don't need to make it worse. But we do need benches, that is a must in all my tribes. Benches and torches. Yeah, we're going to get up torches as well. Uh, let me see. Um, five. You see, there's so much of the fine sticks going that they're placing a craftsman to do the fine stick only. It was not a bad idea. Oh, more migrants? What do you have? You have a lot of fishing. You're 51. You look a lot older, though, on your picture. She saw. Oh, yeah, I'll take her. Hello. Welcome to Hobbledy Hoy. The future Doggerland survivors. No, they're too late to be Doggerland survivors. We can't play Doggerland in 4K BC. We need to start at like 10K and then get out of there before 7K. I think it was around between 6 and 7 KBC that Dogalon started to sink. It was a um, peninsula, it had this small, small area you could cross. Its connect connections were um, part of Denmark, I think it was Germany, and also some in Holland. Mm, uh, I need to do some more geography on that, but I do believe it was around 6 KBC where the peninsula became an island Doggerland it's difficult to survive there there is basically nothing there it's so barren um, mostly because it's ice age so, hmm think that <laughs> but there are hares and there are fish there are clams clams you will find absolutely anywhere no matter timeline there will always be fish there will always be clams and there will always be some prey that will never ever be taken away from any timeline never so you will always have those three things but if you want to survive for instance um in an area without any particular um plant food or anything in the, in, during the ice age you really 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 should uh, plunk your ass down somewhere where there is water and not in the complete and utter wilderness because you have like eight hairs and they won't uh, keep your tribe alive for very long so if you want to to, to migrate every four sleeps then sure you go ahead and do that <laughs> <laughs> to me 
Nah. Not so fun. If there are no means for you to manage with smart play to keep a tribe of 14 plus alive or even 7 if you start really really early um, Mesolithic then if there's no way you can push the game then there's absolutely no point in staying in such a place because you can very quick, quickly figure out what the limitations are when you're out of hairs and you don't fish there is no fish and there's no clam and there's no plant food and there's no other prey types it goes without saying you migrate or you die and that's kind of the entire life circle of your locality you kill the eight hairs that are there uh, eight is just a random number there could be even more or fewer rarely fewer though but at least eight so you have that every every month every four sleeps you have extinct your only prey poor hairs and then you move on to the next one I mean you could do it if you want to but to me that's uh, that's not something any of our ancestors would do the only time I can imagine that they would do anything like that is in transition when they are going from one place to the next then they stop after a week or so when the food is going out and then they do some hunting and then they stay there for a day or two while they are uh, preparing the food for the travel and then they move on so that's what I think you can do there if that is your goal to do the transitioning constantly then go for it i have uh, tested out these things and uh, i don't find them so exciting so i choose to go to a place where i can push the limits more and stay decades even if it's ice age i have managed 10 10 years same place same locality 10k bc so it, it is really really flipping hard work but it is possible it is definitely possible so let me see how are we doing with ropes we have five you are so slow on the ropes I wonder if I have uh, given them too many tasks they are four with five tasks hmm they have ten axes uh, so there's only four tasks and now two of them left well, they are roaming around, but I wish they would stay a little bit longer than just a few weeks. Well, everyone wants to learn everything, so they are running around like confused uh, headless chicken to start with. But it won't last long, thank goodness. Um, she, yeah, she's growing her. Yeah, I can see the green on her, on her hunting skill. It's improving, and yeah, she as well has a little smidgen of green. She probably just started. Because according to her green, she has also been doing some weaving and some tool smithing the last month. It's a good good thing to, to, to check what people have been doing. You can spy on them and based on what their skill levels are. You can see what they've been doing. Like this one, she's been doing quite a bit of tanning the last month. <laughs> and then she's been doing a little bit of, of uh, woodwork. So, <laughs> so it's a good spy tool. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Devs. <laughs> For this spy tool <laughs> I accept <laughs> I quite like it yeah she's improving her uh, weaving Um, she has only a smidgen on fishing though so uh, let me see oh she has oh, he has started weaving and then stopped he's been doing a lot of stone work so yeah you can't do because he's making by faces obviously <laughs> that's why he's so strong there uh, what are you? You are those. Yeah, so you will be improving your woodworking, which he is. He's doing both, it seems. So they are swapping around to try to reach the uh, max uh, overall tribe level of each knowledge that they have themselves. So that is good. Okay, I have nine now. Nine ropes. I think when the morning breaks, we should chalk down some uh, straw huts. Or should I just do reed hut immediately? Mmm... Mm -mm -mm. no I think I want a reed and when we get the proper big reed huts then I will replace those these I will replace these with proper reed, reed huts and when we get the roundhouse I will replace basically everything with roundhouses I think I will still keep my pelt huts though as long as we have um 
prey in the area but then again I'd need to not overdo it because if I do we are going to run out of animals we are going to run out of leather and we probably can't afford to wait for more animals to immigrate to us right so let's uh, spread out the need for material so some pelt huts some reed huts some straw huts some round houses that'll be the best way I think to sort things Okay, I'm gonna let them finish that one and then I'm gonna take a few of the people and let them build more pits I think and also more baskets we have 20 fiber but gasp we need 16 <gasps> per basket oh goodness me that is so much so much but I cannot argue my logic has nowhere to stand it will fall flat and the only thing I will be able to say is but 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 and that's it that's not gonna win anything is it nope 16 fibers it is <laughs> okie dokie so they should finish the reed hut today and then I'm going to do a few more pits see if I can sneak them around these huts three and four like that so then I have one pit per plant food and let's do the baskets as well so we want uh, we want one for dried fish one for dried meat one for honey and one for clams yeah and when I get storehouse I'm going to um, depending on how big the tribe is obviously if the tribe is very large then I can probably use two for honey and two for clam but if not then I'm just gonna remove two of the basket two basket for fish and uh, maybe not meat I might only build one storehouse because there shouldn't really be any time where I have so much meat in the camp that it would justify a, you know, a huge storehouse for it. So I'm not sure I will actually build a, a storehouse for the dried meat, but um, we'll see how big the tribe is. And uh, I don't want to hunt everything to extinction. I like the let them live till old age take them and then we waste nothing I kind of like that um, except the boars they gotta go because they so quickly will ravage your your plant food they are also then eating everything that would normally have reseeded and come up as a new plant or a new tree so that's also something to consider indeed yeah I will have to add more pits as the tribe grows though so they don't stand in a line but you know with the new food preferences that people have they will not stand forever and ever you know in one long line for one type of food they will divide themselves because the food preferences is not only on what they want it's also proximity to the food that is around them and the uh, availability to reach the storage facility or the storage area like if there is a long ass line they will go to the next one and so on so there won't really be these insane long lines we used to have before in the days we could have a line that went like the entire day for one thing for one piece of food in each basket it was quite insane when you had over a hundred people and only one pit you know that was basically us players not you know not thinking ahead and we did not add several pits with the same food so people could divide themselves on these pits we just had this one pit so of course people stood in these long long lines half the work day was gone by the time people had helped themselves you probably couldn't get more inefficient than you were at those times where you just you didn't didn't plan ahead and you just placed one down per plant food and that was it <laughs> right here we go okay that one is ready we could put the clams in that one and then we want 
this one for honey uh, yeah fish and dried meat and that should be all we need of baskets at the moment okay so let's do the rest of the pits obviously very no you're already done you're done beets mushrooms and roots okay I'll add more as we grow there's no hurry to do it right now because they are only allowed to come home with 20 maybe I should add more though because we are kind of growing quite exponentially we are almost 30 already gosh I thought we just started what four pregnant dude we want to stay for 150 years I put the kettle on gentlemen stop running after the girls seriously come on jeez Louise <laughs> so much <laughs> what's wrong with you people we have to feed these little ones damn <laughs> these guys have no shame I bet half of them are not even bleeding married told ya <laughs> what have you been doing <laughs> She's very beautiful though, so... So is she. But she does have a husband. He's a bit older than her, but that's fine. Because you know men, they are fertile up until the day they die. It is what it is. Oh, and her parent is... Uh, yeah, she probably wouldn't dare to do anything but couple up with someone before she got any kids. <laughs> This is the ultimate dude has become strong because he has had to hold three of his very strong-headed daughters in check until they were old enough to to take care of themselves. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, look how pretty she is as well. The, the, the women are so beautiful in this game. So beautiful. And her sister is also pregnant. I don't dare to go look if she's coupled up or not. I might incur the wrath of the chief. <gasps> She's not coming. <laughs> well, we shall soon find out who the father of these children is. I mean, Christ on the bike. Three daughters, two of them are pregnant. Um, let me see, are you coupled? No, but you are also not pregnant, so <laughs> you're okay, I think. Uh, you are not coupled. You are pregnant. We will find out who your baby daddy is. Don't don't you worry about that. We'll figure you out. Well, we already know that he will be the dad to this. Oh, we hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, we might have a scandal on our hands. <laughs> oh, gosh. This might develop to be quite a scandal. So popular. So popular <laughs> with the hobbledy hoy. <laughs> it fits so well with the name, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh gosh, we shouldn't make a soap opera. <laughs> Who the daddy? <laughs> so daddy. <laughs> I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna <laughs> lose it. <laughs> oh, ancient city scandals. Oh gosh, my tears are running. <laughs> I need to focus. I'm gonna have all my, my people die from something if I don't pay attention. I had a plan. What is my plan? All these scandals are taking me away from doing the things I should. I was going to add more housing. That's exactly what I was going to... We are going to come back to the scandals later. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to add mm, another belt out for sure. Let's get down the belt outs. Um, which way are you facing? Oh, that way, okay. Okay, you can go down, so let them build that one first, and then we are going to build a few straw huts. The straw is the same quality though as the pelt huts, so it's not like it's anything minor and people are going to hate sleeping in them, like the, the small straw huts. So we are not going to build small straw huts, seriously, it's not going to happen. We don't want to sleep with spiders. 
And I have decided that you don't sleep with spiders when you're in the pelt hut and you don't sleep with spiders when you have the normal um, sized straw hut. That is just what I have decided and that's the way it is in this game. <coughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get some speed. Let's get some speed. Oh, okay, so uh, do, 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 do. that should go fairly quickly because we have everything they need. And I'm going to see if it's 50 it needs. No, it's 100. Okay, we can do that. We can probably put it on the other side though, can't we? Or, or, or here perhaps. Here. Don't want it too close because that means I'll have to tear it down when we do the um, the bigger hearts, the more quality, the better quality hearts. So I'm just going to build one a bit far away. The reed hearts I will dismantle though because it's going to be impossible to maintain a lot of reed houses for several, almost a centuries, <laughs> for several decades living here. So uh, I, we're going to be a bit smart, even though we have plenty of resources, we're going to be smart and see if we can easily manage to have like four roundhouses, because that would be excellent. It will be such a good way for people to rotate away some of their unhappiness, some of their unrest, um, because uh, as time goes by, uh, work hours will take some and as they get older, if they have a bit poor grades of some of their trades, they tend to complain more, they suffer more, and we can alleviate a bit of that by giving them really good places to sleep. So this is one of the, the small things that we can adjust in the game as we go along, depending on the difference from tribe A to tribe B. If you have a lot of people who, who are struggling with, with fitness reduction, reduction tr um, grades of the trade, then you can do this, and then you will have them happier. So, yeah. It is not a bad idea under any circumstance to give your people a uh, good quality sleep. So there. Okie dokie, so let's uh, have them build. St okay, that one's up already and that one is not far off because we, we had all the materials, didn't we? So it wasn't like they had to gather and then build and then gather and then build. So that's fine. Uh, I am going to see if I can get a complete fence at least partial for some of the huts all the way around them because um, there has been a few tweaks between my first playthrough of the knowledge patch and f to this one uh, when I played the Mesolithic knowledge patch playthrough um, we had two or three tweaks on the server that I am on that, so I was kind of testing a little bit pre-public hotfix release and uh, the Neolithic is with all those tweaks in that has been released to public servers so now I can play it you know and test it out without necessarily being a testing mode of course but play it just like you guys exactly like you will I would see exactly how it behaves without having any kind of different version than you guys we are on exactly the same version now so then I'm gonna see <clears throat> how the tweaks are working out because um, you know when you, when you do test the game and as a player you you quickly find out if things are a bit unbalanced if you know a little bit about the game if you know a little bit how it's supposed to be then you will quickly find the 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 bottleneck of things that is holding back your progression and the, the defenses were a little bit stuck in how much uh, they needed repairs and you know how often they needed to be done and uh, in my other play to video of the Mesolithic I had to remove some of my fencing because it became too stressful to keep up with the population I had and it wasn't uh, an unreasonable amount of fences that I did have up I had the normal amount because that's what you how you basically are supposed to play isn't it you play normal you don't play moronic I mean I can sometimes play moronic if I want to test certain things but you know for normal play this is how you do it you do put fences up you put them all around your camp you put them in several sections you make drawings with them you know you beautify your camp so uh, I think it's important that um, it is always remembered that the game is supposed to not be so much of a chore as it is more uh, you know it should be enjoyment so 
So if you are supposed to build fences, then it needs to be made in such a way that we can continue to build fences and not only have two sections and that's it because we can't afford the, the repairs or the people for the pair or, or the materials. So I, I'm, uh, I'm going to check it out and see. So I'm going to first start with um, a few um, normal fences, wooden fences to see because I felt that was the ones that were kind of in need of a, of a small, small tweak. So when daylight comes, uh, I'm assuming you have, we have um, 153 sticks, that's fine. So, and they are really, really cheap. You can see it's only four sticks. I am going to test out this small fence as well, but you can see the more quality the fences have, the more material you need, you know, to build them and also to maintain them. So we need to use our brains a little bit here, not only go with what is completely beautiful because if I had my will now I would have a mix of wattle fences and the stone walls because they I love stone walls you know I live in England and the stone walls they have here to wall in their properties and uh, you know the the division they use in the fields it is so beautiful I absolutely love it so I'm gonna try out just the normal fence for now and I'm gonna put it around some of my resources so uh, let me see, I, I don't want to kill that bush, because that is a food bush, that is a rose bush, so let's not do that. Let's do a mm -mm -mm -mm. little bit like this. Things that I normally would do anyway is exactly what I'm going to try to do now. So I'm going to do only a section at a time, otherwise you are tearing away so many people to do your task that you have put up for them so yeah we have quite a bit of fish but that is because I on purpose placed more people in the fishing group so that more people could rotate on doing that task so they could learn up to the max tribe level but it the, the as you can see the uh, the knowledge holder of that level is already in the group and he's not planning on giving space to anyone else you see he is you can see on his activity that he does not like to give his space up to anyone he is a headstrong guy and and you can see that on his traits as well he is very headstrong so he's done a little bit of helping out with the building of the peltots and stuff you can see he's just gotten um, architecture knowledge but you can also see that he prefers to go back to where his speciality lies which is hunting and fishing and um, his friend is definitely a fisher and he prefers also to stay where he is so I am going to when um, sleep time or when rest time resets in the morning I'm going to lower the amount of workers to zero and as you can see, he has also skills in, in um, leatherworking. I'm now hoping that he will go do some tanning and then he will go do some other stuff, chores. And then I will quickly put up the work spots to two again, hoping that others will get the spot. Normally they do swap around so that everyone gets their turn in each group. So he's just being difficult. They're just being difficult. There are those in the tribe as well. If you have a lot of will, you are headstrong, you, you could be in trouble. It is the same as it is today. Exactly the same as it is today. Let me have a look at my hunters. So she is... Yeah, she's okay. She's learning more hunting skills, but she has a quite a way to go, though. That's because uh, the hunting skill is so developed in this tribe. And she, yeah, look at her, look at the green on hers. It's really, really much. It's like 10% almost. Look at that, that's quite a bit. So that also means she has been there a while. I'm wondering if I should give them worse tools so that they don't hunt so much. I think that actually might be an idea. I know it's not ideal to take away good hunting tools but we need to be a little bit clever here because we want hunting to be stabilized and to keep up with more than the knowledge holder 
but we also don't want to hunt everything to extinction we want the hunters to work hard to get their prey because that means that more prey will survive there'll be less meat coming into the camp so we're not making the prey go extinct just for us to keep up our hunting levels so we just removed the thing that makes them so great at hunting now they will have to work three times harder for the same amount which you know takes a lot longer than it normally would if you were using the spears the flint spears so they're going to go back to wooden spears i should have thought of that before i started to make it but uh, i don't know why i didn't i was probably too busy paying attention to all the scandals going around oh my goodness <laughs> remind me to have a look to see <laughs> who the fathers are uh, is it this one that we want to see uh, no that's another one uh, which one is it she is one yeah she's attained 20 we just checked the chief it's his daughters you know we will see um, is she the one who is married she or couple they're not married there's no there's no marriage she's just a uh, a partner agreement really it's kind of how it was in those days wasn't it there were no marriages it's to stay together for survival and um, you know and then it developed to marriage later so and she is the one who has no couple at all she could have been doing the notice with any man in the tribe because I do have quite a few women compared to the amount of men so there is a lack of men so the system makes sure that even if you have only a few men they can father more children with more women to make sure that the tribe survives so it is our, our security system which is completely fine stop having babies are you sick no 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 more babies chill cross legs run faster whatever you need woman Go. <laughs> oh holy fiddlesticks these guys seriously they are so fertile i bet you got pregnant just by sitting in the same spot a man had sat five minutes before it's ridiculous i should have known that i shouldn't go with so many women i mean seriously with all these handsome hunks of men what am i expecting Mm -hmm. anyway, anyway, I'll leave them to it. Uh, if we have to migrate because we run out of food, because we have five million kids, so be it. It is what it is. <laughs> Take it one day at a time. But yeah, women do run faster, seriously. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> oh. Let me see, yeah, but I'll add another pelt hot as well. Let me see, I'm just get it down. Um, roughly there. Roughly. So, how is my fence doing? Oh, they're already done. Damn, that was quick. Yep, yeah, let's. Um, I'm gonna leave that section of the fence. Actually, that is really nice. In Scandinavia, this type of fence is called Shigar which I cannot translate to English because I don't know what it's called in English to be honest <laughs> that's the only reason I can't translate it <laughs> um, oh I have another 75 read so when the morning comes I am going to build the read out as soon as they have control on the pelt out oh they are just chucking the tools everywhere that is my bad because I have not assigned any storage areas for them so what I normally always, 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 always do is that I assign uh, work areas or storage areas around the place where I want them to meet up and uh, in front of where I want them to go sleep. So I'm going to chuck them here. Might move them a tad later on. Um, so going to food those and those um what else do i have a lot of no i don't have a lot of everything um, yeah those are the those 
Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting what I already can make, so there's that. Do I have one for those? No, I don't. Right, I'll do a double one for the uh, wooden spears. Sure, sure. Yeah, can do, can do. So now they will place them here instead of just throwing them around. So that's good. Uh, okay, so they are done with the, that fence. Now I'm just going to wait for them to finish this paltot and then I'm going to do another reed hut. The reed huts have a 25 positivity, which means that it will reduce unrest by 25% and that's good um, oh I forgot what I was gonna do silent night I was gonna take down the fishermen didn't I well maybe they have swapped places no they haven't they are so unbelievably stubborn seriously you need to give spaces to others and I can't keep fishing up my entire stock because you two are so stubborn are you brothers wouldn't surprise me in the slightest no you're not Fine. I'll sort it tomorrow morning. How about these two? Yeah, they are still... Oh, look at her! She's almost at 50% on her hunting. <coughs> How are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now I'm going to take away the fishing spots. Ta-da! And I'm gonna spy around and see what they're doing instead. So I'm gonna make sure that. They oh, so he pushed out one of the hunters. <laughs> they do that. They do that all the time. But that's fine. You can go, you can go hunt. So the thing is that there needs to be a certain balance uh, the other way around as well. Because since he is the max knowledge holder it is also rather smart to let him stay in the group where he does have max knowledge because he will then increase his own meaning the others have more they can work towards and when he finally passes away the others will have reached up to him so we don't lose anything in, in fact we are gaining so there's a little bit of a, a, a circle that you need to dance around with this okay so tomorrow morning I'm going to add two fishermen again and uh, hope that he does not steal a spot <laughs> let's go I'm just gonna wait a little bit making sure that that he is far gone to hunt before I open up the fishing spots to let others gain some fishing skills before he dies otherwise his skills will go with him that's just the way the system works so uh, are you out and about please tell me you are Ta-da. okay let me see she has fishing skills he that's the dude I just uh, <laughs> expelled <laughs> okay I just have to do this I have no choice we are gonna overproduce fish it is what it is Let me see, if I have a max... No, she's not. He is the max. Oh, we gave space to someone. If he is pushing people out to fish, I will have his ass. I knew it. Oh, my God. <clears throat> well, I have opened up extra spots, so there's that. Like this guy here. He will catch up with those people. Oh, but what kind of trait is that? He's a bit slow. Oh... That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. You know, but most of the time they do swap around anyway. So, and that is, in the long run, it is the right thing to do. Because you're not supposed to only have one skill holder. You're not supposed to only have one that can do the good job. And the others <laughs> are not going to do anything. But are you also not going to have the entire tribe having all the skills all the knowledge is that's never going to happen it's going to be divided on the tribe like one guy has two knowledges one has four some other has a few as well and they are differing between what kind of knowledge that's knowledges they have so they are kind of all 
filling each other in and filling each other out and they should really stop feeling each other i mean we have enough kids seriously there's, there's enough kids oh thank goodness oh i'm gonna go see i'm gonna go see the child that has been born um it's you who are your parents okay that's not uh, our child our our um chieftain's daughter so that's fine okay never mind <laughs> okay um yep 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 yep, yep. Uh, what was i gonna do i thought i had a plan look how strong he is dude he's still allowing everything to happen he's convincing everyone in the tribe that everything is good no matter how this lily person does it she good she good <laughs> Right. What was I going to do? I was going to do something. I was going to check my hunters because I saw an error here. Or Okay, there's no hunting. That means that we have hunted all the boars. Which was the plan. We don't want boars. So I'm going to leave that one person, uh, a one person job. So every time there are boars coming into the area, they will immediately go start hunting them. Okay, the rest of the animals will not be hunted. I will, if I can, obviously. I mean, if people keep having kids like rabbits, we might have to start hunting much, much earlier than I would like to. I would like to not hunt at all and just let it become our natural, you know, circle of life and then we don't waste anything on the animal when it has died after a long and good life. So there's that. Now let's see. I am... Um going to add the second uh, readout because uh, yeah all the things I've asked them to do has been done so I'm not going to get burned again by adding way too much stuff for them to do in one go so I am going to add things more incrementally so that I don't steal everyone away from their chores constantly and now I need to pay attention to the fence. Uh, still does not need repairs. But then again, it's not like it's just been a few sleeps. But if I remember correctly, it was like three, three or four sleeps, and then the normal fence needed repairs again. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's keep an eye on that. So this is sleep three. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so one sleep is one week. That means that. Yeah. Oh, they're so quick. When you have the materials, they are normally really, really quick, which is good. I, I just can't get used to that. Uh, they've added everything to be seen you know you can see after everything I understand it is probably to help out the the new players but everyone who learns the game will rather quickly become fed up to of watching it all the time and you know the more busy your tribe is it will be just a large mess won't it mm. I hope they, they make it like you can press K four times one time to get rid of all the icons and objects Two times to get rid of icons on avatars, three times to get rid of the user interface, and four times to get back to what everything was. We shall see. Oh, I had another thing I was going to do. I was going to give the crafters a bench. Where are the crafters? There they are. So they can uh, sit under the tree and craft. Sure. That's what the case is, isn't it? So uh, the difference between Mesolithic and Neolithic in this match is quite stark because you do have a lot more people, you do have a lot more resources. There's just more of everything. The the better your climate is, that is that is logic. But then again, I've also learned to not chalk down too much because things will need your workforce. They will need the same workforce when they are being repaired. 
And if you have chalked down so much that everyone is busy doing your repairs, you have basically repaired your tribe to death. So this is the, the biggest lesson that all of us need to keep in mind when we are playing this new version. And, and I think that is the, the really big thing that had that kind of got me a bit because I was not prepared for for this and I overbuilt and I had to remove things, yeah. I had to remove some fence and stuff because it was too much to do for my tribe. I did not have the population for it. So it needs to be this incremental increase like uh, we talked about earlier that you can't just chalk down everything in one go and then, you know, hope for the best. It doesn't work like that. People will abide by whatever you are demanding of them. Using clear task tool and also chucking down buildings is a demand from you as the, the top leader, you know. Um, so that is one of the, the big things that we all need to remember for every tribe, for every environment, no matter where you are in the world, what timeline, blah, 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 you need to not overbuild. That is number one. Um, also, another trap that I have gone into on purpose is that I am overproducing. I find it okay to overproduce a little bit in order to reach certain goals especially if the overproduction you're doing is not going to be too much waste because for instance the, the ropes they will always be used uh, the first year you are constantly building aren't you you're constantly doing something with ropes and the crafters are constantly using uh, the, the the spears and the fine sticks so these are kind of the things that I find totally fine to overproduce a little bit and not having to wait around for, for anyone to, to build one and one stick. So, yeah. So that those are two things. Those are the two things that kind of hit you a little bit hard in the face every now and then, depending your size or tribe and, and the time and how much you are lacking, uh, that you need to do a little bit of spamming of some resources and some products in order to, to get some good um, progression in your knowledges. And I do believe that we're not supposed to do too much of this when we are small, because when you are small, you're small. You're not supposed to, to do rocket science. I mean, I've said this before, and I will probably say it a million times again. When you are a small tribe, you are not supposed to rocket absolutely everything. You are not supposed to have access to absolutely everything, especially not in the Mesolithic. Neolithic, sure, you will have access to more. You saw when we landed, we had a lot more proficiency than we had in the Mesolithic. Mesolithic was pure hard work. This has been quite a bit of a breeze, to be honest. We, we were made with 21 people. We already had a lot more workforce than we had in the Neolithic. We already had a higher percentage of things we could make. We had a better quality option for basically everything compared to the Mesolithic. So Neolithic is a little bit of a, of a holiday in comparison, but you still have to do the work, have to do more or less the same work in order to reach what you want in the Neolithic. And what is always, always happening in all the tribes I have been playing is that it is the architecture that is keeping you back because there is no real justification for spamming huts. There is no real justification for building a million huts above what your tribe population is. You're supposed to keep it roughly about where your tribe population is. So I have spammed a little bit with regards to tools and I have built a few more huts here and there, but nothing uh, moronic, you know, it has still been within the reasonable amount for normal play. So everything I do is for normal play. It's not agenda play at the moment, besides that I want to stay long term and build projects. But uh, the thing is, you can still spam to your heart's content. For instance, if you are landing in the Mesolithic and you want to build your stuff quickly, you could, in theory, uh, practice as well, I have tested it, you could start out overproduce absolutely everything. When you lose a critical uh, resource due to this overproduction, you migrate to the next space. Then do the same again, and then you migrate again, and so do you keep repeating until you've reached a level where you are happy with what you've got. There are limits, of course. There are soft caps on the, on the resources you can uh, get 
per locality so you have to leave even though you have the entire area drowning with food if you don't have for instance flint you need to move on you know it's just the way it is some resources will end much sooner than others and you can migrate until you have the levels that you actually are satisfied with even if you are in the Mesolithic but of course you won't get the pure Neolithic things there is no way you're going to get roundhouses or big menhirs, large menhirs in, in Mesolithic you need to be much closer to the Neolithic you can start getting it when you are moving into the Neolithic timeline with your Mesolithic tribe when you get migrants because migrants that are coming from within that timeline will bring neolithic architecture with them they will be influenced by the neolithic architecture they will have neolithic culture in them so then you will see that things are changing in your culture tab and if you see this one is completely green meaning it's fully neolithic i have a zero mesolithic left in it but we had the skills from beforehand and since the small men here is allowing us to build it both mesolithic and neolithic we can never lose it unless we are sitting on our bombs for 14 generations then we can then we can lose it but not before <laughs> so yeah you, you need to be more vigilant in how much you build and all those things to be careful so you don't build or repair your tribe to death and also of course <clears throat> repairs there are some small increasing in repair costs but not so much that it will ruin the game for you I have not experienced that in the slightest I can barely feel it anywhere in any of my resources I have only played for a month and a half with this type of decay and this type of resource use so I haven't done properly, you know, 50 years play to see how that is. But that is not something that a lot of players will do. Most players play between 1 to 5. And if they are a bit, a bit patient, they can actually play up until 10. But there's not many people that I have talked to or met or seen that play as long as me with the same tribe. My longest is 87 year, years with the same tribe. So, but of course, there's a lot of migrations going on as well. But uh, yeah, we need to adjust the game depending on the tribe we have, our resources, basically the seed. So the changes are not super many with regards to how you are playing the game. It's more you need to fine tune some of the things that we did more easily before, like chalking down things. When it was down, it was down. You know, you didn't need to think about often repairing them and then dragging away your workforce so that you got less resources coming to camp but now you do so there are a few things that we we will learn as we go along whether it's in the good way or in the bad way time will tell as we play okay so i'm making a new straggler group to get stones i just can't decide where to put it Uh, the group um, created now, the struggle group I've created now, is supposed to gather stones for when when we can build the men here. And I just want to see where does the sun go down, where does it go up, it should go up over here. Yeah, that's where it goes up. So, um, yeah, I want to decide where to put it, but uh, I still got time because we can't build it yet. It's quite a... It's not super long, but uh, we still can't build it, so I, get, I got time. But I want to let some of my stragglers um, be useful and uh, gather stones. I just need to figure out where the heck I should put it. Well, it's probably going to be over here somewhere. I think, I think, I think. We shall see. not running away and he's still going strong my leader he's fantastic isn't he he is fantastic so there's are there still people sleeping out in the open how many of those 10 18 21 24 mm. yep still people 
in the open. Oh gosh, I need another 11. Okay, so I can... Oh no, there's one there, so I need another 8. So I can build another reed and then another pelt, I think, or straw. I think I'll do straw here in the back. Okay, so then I have enough for everyone. Unless people keep getting pregnant all the time. Oh, I'm going to check. I'm going to check. Let me see. Uh, you. Oh, are you the one who didn't have babies? You. Now. You are two years old. Who is your dad? Oh, okay. So it is the husband or the, the partner that is the father. Okay, then we know that she didn't go do the notice with any other men. Fine. Fine. <laughs> That's okay. Scandal averted. Not sure I'm super happy about that. It would be flipping hilarious to have an ancient city scandal like that. But uh, we need to find the scandal somewhere else. It won't be here. Okay, so uh, was it you who had the second baby? Uh, no, no, she didn't have babies. Um, no, it's got to be the last sister. I, I keep mixing them up. It's got to be the last sister, that one. Let's have a... Um, let's go have a look. She, yeah, we already looked at her. Yeah. So, that one, yeah. She's uh, two years old. Who is your daddy? So, that's her dad. But... Oh! He has been cheating on her. He has been cheating on his partner. But it's not cheating, is it? Because... There are so few men that the system allows the men to father other children as well. And she has to be okay by it because she's still partnered with him. So it was uh, common back then, isn't it? It's, it's uh, what you are used to. It's your culture. Uh, so that's fine. Totally fine and dandy. Look at her hair. I love her hair. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Right, and uh, she has she has three siblings. She has a really strong sister. Look at her; she is so strong. Wow! If she just had, she's gonna grow more charisma as she grows older. This might actually be our leader in the future. But look at her will; she's as stubborn as her uncle, the chieftain. <laughs> Okay, I am going to add a few more houses. I'm going to do a normal straw hut. I'm going to do a pelt hut. And I'm also going to do a reed hut. Then I have a few extra sleeve spaces. But I don't really expect that no more of my girls will have babies. Of course, they will. They will have babies east and west. I just have to keep building. I just hope that I will manage to build at least some projects before we have to migrate because we have so much population uh, that we have to give up on the food which will be completely depleted after 10 years. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Get one there. I do like to place those torches around. Okay, so that's the uh, the reed hut, and that should be it. Yeah, that should be it. Yep. Just let them build that in peace. The 
slowly but surely learning. I just hope they can manage to learn to the max level before the uh, knowledge holder dies from old age. Got plenty of years left in him, so it's not like he's gonna fall over dead tomorrow. Not at all. Um, let me see. Are you guys swapping around? Yeah, you have learned a little bit in toolsmithing, but you are now doing woodwork. So you can see that she has other skills as well that she's working on. So she's new to this uh, woodworking, which is fine. It's fine. Um, they swap around as they should. Uh, you are actually doing these, which is tool smithing. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, you are also new. So this shows that they are actually swapping around to let others try to to learn some of the skills as well. Okay, so we have built everything we need here. If we are going to build more, it is going to be a complete waste. So I'm not going to do that. I will just be patient and try to not have a wasteful uh, way of doing things. Um. Yeah, you are you're good. You are slowly increasing, meaning that means you're also slowly increasing the tribe overall, which is excellent. We just need others to follow suit, preferably a bit younger people, because uh, these guys are not any younglings. I'm gonna now that it's winter. You see the food is rather low, so I'll chalk up to to eight. See if we can get some young people in as well over the winter to learn the skills. You already had a bit. You are new to fishing. Yeah, you will learn because you do have good grades to learn. You have skillful. Yeah, you should be good. So have a look at you. You are also young and you have good uh, traits and you also have already have four skills. Well, she is she is uh, very, very resolved. She is stubborn, so she, she might actually manage to get plenty skills plenty knowledges based on that and there she went back to to any other group right no i'll just leave her to it <laughs> they will keep swapping groups to learn new skills to improve their own skills it happens it happens all fine and dandy so the the fence it it drops to like 160 ish before it needs repairs and that is many many sleeps and I'm I'm quite satisfied with that so that means we won't have to be so completely worried about keeping up uh, the workforce for repairs so that is actually good but you still you still of course get uh, woodworking skill from repairing them but it's not uh, as often as before so that is actually a bit preferable, I have to admit. Because it's not like woodworking is the problem, is it? Woodworking is not an issue in the slightest. Because we get benches and, and loads of other things that they make, uh, the crafters for instance, like the sticks that you constantly make, those are, are belong to woodworking. So there are plenty of options and not only the, the, the fences. The problem is not that it's a fence it's because the fences are very numerous you're not only building four you're building perhaps 400 so um, I'm glad that the the devs tweak this so that the, the um, it can be be done you know having fence around your entire your entire camp whether it be stone or, or wood or whatever it is so that is really good absolutely love that let me see Look at all the kids. Look at all the kids. That's like how many kids do I have? Ten children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Indeed. I'm going to chuck down the storage area for the excess stones because they're coming home with so much stones because I've put everyone that does not have a task or those who are finished with the task I've put to gather stones so it's going to be a lot of stones but the thing is we are going to need them all considering that each small mini costs 1000 stones and the big one costs 5000 stones 
it's like are you serious you need 20 thousands to get four and i used to chalk down like 16 in my tribes this is why i always want to stay long term because you need decades to complete these things unless you have somehow managed to get such a, a golden heavenly seed that food is constantly on your doorstep and you only need like two persons to do it even if you have 150 people <laughs> not gonna happen ain't gonna happen i remember the challenge i did a while back i picked on purpose the testing tribe that had the shittiest seed ever it was a nightmare already at year 12 i had like a hundred and something people 130 i think and it was a constant fight to keep people alive and people were constantly threatening to leave and constantly unhappy because they were half starved all the time there was never enough food and i couldn't complete my project but that was on purpose it was supposed to be a challenge you know after i stopped recording the challenge at 300 people and year was it 17 or 18 i don't remember but i played further past year 20 on that for testing purposes to see the salvation stuff see how that behaved and uh, i had over 400 people <laughs> in the end it was horrendous to play it was so difficult <laughs> look the difference between the mesolithic and the neolithic way they look they have a much lighter skin can you see that they also have <clears throat> less uh, dreadlocks because uh, now is the time where they manage to make more fine-tuned combs and stuff like fine tooth on the combs there is um, new archaeological evidence though that even as uh, early as 5500 BC the Egyptians actually had proper combs and uh, I'm not in this in the slightest surprised that they did it does belong to you know a place in, in history that had a, a different ice age at a different time you have to go like 200,000 years ago to find the the last uh, proper ice age in in Africa and uh, they the ice age that we had uh, in Europe was for Africa a dry ice age there, there were like a one degree difference in temperature with them compared to Europe which was completely covered in ice so the, there's that. Of course, they would have, have uh, developed a lot more, both in Africa and, you know, Asia, because the Ice Age um, retreated so early in Asia compared to Europe. So there's that. You see the clothing is also different. They, they, the textiles are much thinner and there's also much less leather and fur. So it, it really shows how drastically the environment has changed from the time where we played in the Mesolithic. <coughs> Look at the children with their diaper pants. That's, I think that uh, should be changed. <laughs> I think that needs to go. It needs to go, devs, please. We can't have children up to that age having uh, diaper pants. It's uh, a smidgen too much. Just a smidgen. <laughs> With the pumps, they're so cute though, aren't they? So cute. <laughs> they have this lovely wiggle when they walk. <laughs> okay, so we are into basically just tipped into year two, and we have another two pregnancies. Uh, normally, I would be super duper happy because you don't often get a seed that is this good with pregnancies. You, you this is the higher end of good seeds. Um, it does, however, hamper a little bit what I want to do because I want to stay for decades to make projects. So, mm, you, <laughs> you. <laughs> oh. Well, it is what it is. When you have a lot of females, there will be babies. Who wouldn't want babies? Well, I don't want too many babies. We need to take care of those we have as well. You know, we can't like have 15 kids if you can barely feed yourself that is just not how it should be but each to their own however in this tribe i am the boss please run faster ladies <laughs> at least for a while <laughs> having a child every year you know that's the way they did it back in the days they didn't have any kind of or at least not everyone had access to any kind of protection so it was not unusual in the slightest to have like one child per one to two years. 
I have no clue how they did it though. I mean, I personally, I would probably have been driven insane after kid number 10. Seriously. <laughs> Being the boss has basically no say on who becomes pregnant. That is um, something that I do not have any choice in. <laughs> but you know, normally you would love having each and every baby that is coming along because uh, your seed is rarely this good. This is a, a rare seed that you have so many pregnancies, even though you have all these amounts of females that uh, can carry children. So I should actually be grateful and stop complaining. But um, that also means that if the seed continues like this, I might not manage to stay for decades to finish any kind of project. At least I am going to try. I think we can do this. We can do this. If the girls run a little bit faster. <laughs> we are soon going to see more colors as well on the clothing. Because that is congruent. Because as the Mesolithic influence had less and less say. People who are farmers. Who, who had a, a sedentary lifestyle. They got more time. And we will have the loom. We need the loom. Because we need to weave stuff. And we need to make different types of colors on the clothing as well. It was luxury back in Mesolithic. Because you had to survive first of all. Nobody had time for these diggy dokings. To do with your clothing and stuff. Except perhaps making it for the chieftain. Or, or any other great persons. But here. Uh, if you look at our society today. Everyone has adornments. Everyone has colors. Everyone has jewelry. Everyone has something special about them. Back in those days, there was no time for that. It was perhaps the, the leader and that was it. And then you come to Neolithic and you see more and more people have finer clothes, more adorned clothes, more ornaments, more this, more that. But I do want to see more body paint and more tattoos because there's very little tattoos in the Neolithic population. Um, for sure, there were body painting, body changing, body tattooing or any kind of... Um, uh, paint whether it was realistic or for the weather or against insect it doesn't matter they all had it um, if it coincided with some ritualistic stuff fine I don't mind as long as we get some kind of face body paint uh, tattoo because that is it is a must everyone had it and there are tons of tribes and areas in the world today that still has their traditional cultural tattooing body painting etc that you don't need to go far just go to New Zealand Okay, that's a bit far, but go to New Zealand, you'll find people with tattoos. They are extremely cool to watch. It's seriously, seriously cool. So there's that. So chucking down a few more of the pits, because we're going to need more food income. Now that we have more people, suddenly we have another one pregnant and two more babies, 11 children. So um, chucking down Reed Hut, sure. Uh, good quality, better quality than anything else. And uh, I will, of course, be adding more peltats as well because they, they are not minus. Um, they're not making people more grumpy. They just do, do not improve it. So this is what the reed huts are for. They will chill a little bit of the unrest, which is good. Um, I don't think... You, if it's going to continue like this, if it's going to be like this, that the, like, there's like three to four pregnancies every year, I have to decline each and every flipping from migrant that comes unless they have a higher skill in a, a knowledge. Then I have to accept them and then let people reach up to their skill level. And that will make it permanent in the tribe. So I think that will have to be it. You know, it's going to be really, really difficult to deny females access, especially young uh, females. It's going to be so hard to turn your, your mind around what you normally are doing compared to what you need to do in order to, to, to follow your agenda, which is to stay long term and to build projects. So that's going to be quite a challenge for me to, to not just click accept when I, I'm dying to click accept. We have to reject. We, we have no choice. Otherwise, we won't. Oh, my goodness. What is? Are you serious? I have almost 1500 stone. Well. That's a full men here and a half. You know, it sounds so much when you have this amount, but you know, when it comes to men here, uh -uh, it ain't that much, honey. <laughs> it's not much at all, is it? Oh, dude, it's so expensive to build these now, isn't it? It would be so much better if it was so much cheaper, but that would be too easy, wouldn't it? It would be way too easy, and it wouldn't be very authentic at all. 
so there's that <laughs> need to listen to that as well okay so read is done i am going to put up did nobody sleep in the open do i have enough with the last readout i might have so the readouts do five so that's 20 there uh what else do i have i have eight two three four and then i have three of those and they take four so that's 12. what's 25 plus 12. <laughs> So we have 37 and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, that's uh, 12. What did I say? 37 plus 12, 47, 49. We have 49 sleeves on. Oh, we have quite a bit then. Then we don't need more. We're good. Don't tell me if my math is wrong. I will never learn. Just forget about it. I'm a hopeless course. <laughs> I, do, I do cook very good food though. So there's that. I do have talents. I just don't quite know where they all are. <laughs> Right, 36 and 37 with the new baby, that's fine. Um, they are 25, aren't they? They are 25. So the bigger ones, they give, of course, is it 50 these ones give? It is. It is. And of course, this big one gives 75. Oh, I can't wait till I get like four of them in the tribe. But it's going to take a long, long time. Look at all the red we have on architecture. Oopsie. Yeah. But you can see, you can build it fairly quickly into the Neolithic age. You can see there's only like 20% or so of Atlantic Neolithic cultural requirement for it. Meaning that if you are really quick and if you have a really, really good seed in architecture, you could build it right around the shift when Mesolithic started to melt into the Neolithic. And that will be a very, very early building of the roundhouse i'm gonna see if i can do that at some point see if i can manipulate to get a really good seed and try to build it in the shift between the mesolithic and the neolithic although they were kind of melted into each other because it wasn't like from day one to day two everything was completely changed it took millennia and centuries of course but uh, let's see how how i can fix and mix and tricks that in a later uh, in a later game so there's that so now i have tons of pits as well uh, I still do not you can see there's so little meat trickling in because the boars have been hunted to extinction so there's so little trickle of meat coming in that I won't be needing any kind of storehouse for for the meat I do believe that I should make one for fish though or maybe hazelnuts and mushrooms because hmm. we do have tons of straw we have straw for decades many many decades and look at all the grass and they also increased the rate the grass is growing so it will grow back much quicker than it used to and you can see all my rivers have tons of reed and fiber i could i could be luxurious and build more than two storehouses i could make one for mushrooms and also one for hazelnuts but they will be torn away torn down they will be dismantled as the years go by because the food diminishes doesn't it the, the the produce is less and less per year so in the end you will kind of have if you even if you're using 14 people to gather hazelnuts you might only come home with 100 instead of 1200 so it's a natural diminishing which belongs to the authenticity of nature it is how it is Okay, so the reed hut is done and I'm looking over and I see I have I have too many huts, but that's fine. It will help us with the architecture. It's not like I'm going overboard completely, not playing moronically. Um, we still lack a bit to get all the stuff we want, but then again, we are basically year two. Um, so yeah, we can see on the, um, the menus, you can see that the complete uh, Mesolithic is red. It means you have zero Mesolithic influence in your tribe. So you will ever only need one culture to build either item. You won't ever need both cultures. So even though you are losing all your Mesolithic people in your tribe, all the influence, you will still be able to build the small men here. So when looking at the monthly reports, you see the increase is fairly low. It has to also do with that you are so high in the most most of your proficiencies that the increase will be fairly low 
at least there is increase. We just need to be patient and uh, we will get what we want as time goes by. We just need to stay alive till then. So how many are we now? We are 38 people. Goodness me. Uh, where are they all coming from? <laughs> Let's have a look at people's skills and see what they've learned. She is definitely green on both uh, toolsmithing and also hunting. This means that she has been uh, doing a little bit of other things as well besides hunting. You can see there's a bit of archaeology. Why do I keep saying archaeology? Because I love archaeology. A little bit of ar uh, architecture as well in her skills. Um, so she has been helping out with building and also perhaps maintaining some of that. So she's not stuck to that one hunting job, uh, which is fine. But she at least is increasing on the skills that she has. What are you doing? <clears throat> he has been doing a little bit of stone working, a little bit of tanning, I can see as well, because that's a little bit green on him. Um, let me see. She seems a little bit stagnant. No, she has been doing a little bit of architecture. She's been doing a bit of building and a little bit of, of repairing, probably, a bit of maintenance. So you can see that on the character. Um, oh my goodness. Why do you have so many? You have six. How did you get six? Are you super stubborn? You might be super stubborn. No, you're just normal stubborn. Is there a thing like normal stubborn? Did I just invent something? <laughs> uh, she has quite a bit of green on uh, leatherworking. So she's been doing a bit of tanning, I think, or repairing the um, tanners. The rest is fairly the same. Yeah, a little bit of green as well on the woodworking. So everybody seemed to be swapping around a little bit. This guy, for instance, he's been doing a lot of fishing. And now he has a little bit of woodworking. So you can see the system is really working well with regards to who is doing what and how they share their tasks. And that not it's not monotonous. You know, it's not the same thing over and over again. People are swapping a little bit around to get other skills to improve the skills and other knowledges and stuff like that which is how it should be this is working as intended I had a, a very small technical issue so I had to reload a previous save it's only a matter of five ten minutes gameplay but uh, yeah so I chucked down some more huts to help the architecture to more quickly get to the uh, the small men here because I'm dying to build it I'm dying to see how it looks with all the new tweaks and how much repairs it needs it should be really really little though because it is stone it is supposed to last for millennia um, without needing any oh yeah sure well what's another three gonna do I mean seriously we already have like 40 plus people and people are constantly being pregnant and <laughs> everything so why not let's just go for it Right, so uh, let me see. I am on on track with regards to how many people have places to sleep. I think. So let's just see how this goes. Um, they are fine with sleeping out for a, for a few days. It's not like they're gonna die from it. it. They seem to be less affected by sleeping by the fireplace than they are by sleeping in a small straw hut. I'm telling you, it is the spiders. The spiders are making people ill. I'm sure of it. Anyway, <laughs> here goes nothing. Let me see. So I've adjusted the groups a little bit. I do have a few fishermen because it was just winter. So, of course, there will be no plant food of any amounts needed to feed 40 plus people. I also built a few more of the pits because we're going to I have increased what the, my gatherers are coming home with because now we are 40 people compared to just 20 so that needed to go up a little bit so I have uh, built four more pits to to reflect this change so now we just have to wait and see how when we will get the architecture needed to replace all the straw huts and of course all the smaller reed huts because they will be taken over by the big reed huts and of course all the straw huts will be taken over by the big straw huts because they're much better quality aren't they and also have a 
more sleep spaces and there are no spiders there no spiders in the proper quality huts that's the way I have decided it should be the tribe and I agrees and I'm very happy <laughs> oh yes we did it oh my goodness look 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 we can make big red hats big stars and we can build the small men here I love it let's do it okay so let's uh, see if we can get them a little bit evenly placed going to use my straggler group that has been collecting stones to do the um, the building of the men here that means that it will only be people who are free anyway not tied down to any chores in any groups that will build them that way you are avoiding that important workforce is spending time on something which is you know decorative it's not a necessity it's not food it's not critical resources it's it's just something that we as players want isn't it and besides normal players place down one man here because you only need one to pray to your gods but I want many I want to make a lily henge and I'm probably going to make them different sizes as well so that it looks a little bit more artistic I have never done this before because we haven't been able to make different sizes but here goes I am going to remove the reed huts first I'm just gonna wait till the the night is over so that people have slept in good huts before I demand dismantle them all the day after and then immediately start building the big reed huts nice and you know now the fun can really begin because now we can build many years we can make wonders so now i'm just waiting for the night to be over so that i can dismantle all the reed huts first and then replace them with a large reed hut or a big reed hut and then i am going to do the same with all the straw buildings they are going down and being replaced with the big straw huts because they are much better quality people will sleep better they will feel better and there are no spiders there just saying so if we look at what is uh, feeling better with Neolithic compared to Mesolithic of course Mesolithic will be a lot harder because you have a lot less proficiency in all of the skills all of the knowledges so even if you always get all your knowledges you don't get the same uh, proficiency and that is random so you could actually end up in like 8k BC and have really good proficiency you, you just don't know it's the seed but of course there is this natural cap of, of how much proficiency you should have during those times um, I have yet to start building any uh, fences that for instance around my camp I will start doing that as soon as I have a bit more of infrastructure in the tribe set down so I know where to put the fences and um, then I will see better how it is with regards to the tweaks the devs have done in the past few few days um, on how the decay is and uh, how much um, workforce is needed to do these things because the problem is not the resource I feel the problem is the workforce the need for workforce in repairs you can't get away from what is the issue in my opinion is that sometimes the workforce is needed too much to be dragged away from the normal chores to do the repairs so if this tweak is how I think it will be I have not tested it yet let that be known this is new for me as well so if it is the way I think that the devs have managed to do it it will be absolutely spot on they are normally really good with getting things spot on if there is something that we need to change oh when did I get large benches I didn't even notice but we shall build them we certainly shall I'm also going to move away the uh, storage areas for the tools as I have my hearts down okay that's that one done that basically means that it's time for the straw huts to go as well because they will also be replaced with a better straw hut so we are probably going to lack a little bit of sleep spots for a while but that's fine they can manage a few days a few sleeps they're hardcore now I mean they are the after all the ancestors of the Mesolithic Hobbly Hoy tribe who survived 10 years same locality and rocked it hard so here goes 
I constantly have to go back and check on my my men here. See how the men here wonder is doing. I have so many stuff now, so much, so much uh, stuff in the camp. And <clears throat> if I'm going to keep all the icons, it's going to drive me insane. It's too much. I keep harping on about it. It is too much. Seriously, there needs to be done something about it. I'm pretty sure if we whinge enough, the, the devs will change it. <laughs> okay, so I have removed the peltot that was up in the corner. This one, yeah. And then I've added a few to the bottom, a bit away from the focal point, so people don't seek those huts first. Because I want to build um, more roundish, I want to make the fence afterwards, uh, and see how that goes. Because I do have quite a bit of people left over that doesn't really have a chore all the time. So my straggler groups are constantly full, which is a good thing, because that means that they don't have to take the, the work that they are needed elsewhere to do so they will do the work that you know is luxury like building the uh, the project and i also move all the tools away from that area because i would like to have my roundhouses there i would like four one on each side and then two more positioned nicely around the focal point so that that will be the first place people people go to sleep after they've eaten and and uh, chilled out after work so that is a necessity, I think, to have them as close as possible for for people to take the better quality huts first. And yep, these has to go, all of them. Uh, I still haven't put up any of my tool makers to do more or to spam because I find it too wasteful. So I'm just going to rely on that things will come to me if I just play normal and play it right. This is also, for me, the best way to see if the game actually is working as intended without us having to manipulate and mass produce and tricks and mix too much. There will always be some kind of, of of things that we can do to play better, to make the game fit better to what we want and stuff like that. But you know, for, for normal play, this is how we should do it really. Right, so I have added a few more big straw huts, so now I do have enough sleep space for everyone. And uh, yeah, my, my people keep getting babies. I can do nothing about it. I have the laziest girls ever. They don't run from any men. So, lo oh, look how they're coming along. That's really nice. That is really nice. It goes a bit quicker than I thought it would, but we are a year three, and we, you can see that both the straggler groups have people in it, meaning that there are plenty of people who are either quickly without a chore per day, or that basically do not have a spot where they can work. So the way that the straggler group works is that when you have max priority on all your other groups, the straggler groups will only be filled if the chores or the tasks done in any of the other groups are finished or where they can't do them. So this system, I think, works perfectly when you have the priority on minimum. You will only get people that is basically idling because they have nothing else to do. So I'm not wasting any workforce in the slightest. In fact, I'm making sure that they're not sitting on their bums all day doing absolutely sh shite all. Because that is not acceptable and it's certainly not congruent for the timeline in the slightest. So there's that. Can you believe I had like, how much did I have? I had like a thousand stones and poof, it's all gone. But the group is absolutely packed. You can see it's 14 out of 14 getting stones and building these things so we might actually manage to finish it within 10 10 years maybe 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 we shall see okay so you're probably only producing you are oh yeah you're making one fine stick i think no you're not what are you making nothing no, we have everything. We have 10 of those, 20 of those, 10 of those. Oh, we need one by face. That's what she's there to do. Yeah, she has lots of stone working. And this guy has just learned stone working. So he wants to be a stone worker. Sure, that's fine. So I have removed the clutter of huts that I had on this side. I'm going to make it a little bit more aesthetic pleasing. And then I'm going to add them over here, so it's a little bit more tidy. Um, 
and I want to start putting uh, fences around these and then fences around these. So these I think I will use wattle fences and I will see if I can um, can we make the uh, the other fences yet? We can. We can make the small fence, the round pole fences, which are so cool. And I think I'm going to place them around here, but not too much at the same time. I'm just going to do one section at a time and then wait a bit and then add another section so that they have different times of repairs. I don't drag my entire workforce to repair them. But the thing is, with the normal fences, the repair time will be basically nothing because it costs four to build and it, there is no way it will cost the same amount to repair. So maybe one or two sticks to repair them every many, many sleeps. So we'll see how, how it works out when I have like a lot of fences. How much of the workforce will I be taking? How much will the tribe suffer? We will, f we will find out and then we adjust as we go along because some fences take longer to need repairs and uh, the fences take uh, shorter and of course some fences cost a lot while others cost basically nothing so we shall see we shall see okay time to make some fences i'm going to start with these and i'm going to use wattle i just need to see if i can wiggle my way through that stone somehow let me see if i do this what will I disturb? I will disturb the bench. I'll take away the bench for now and then just move it uh, back somewhere else, not too far from where I intended it. Right, so now let's see what we can do. If we start with just a straight line and then we angle it like two and then two and then straight. So there. Okay, so let's do that section first before we chuck down more. That is 12. So maybe 8, 10 people in total will go away from their chores to do, to do that one. Yeah. Well, we have 52 people. It should be alright for one day. But they are more expensive, they cost more, hence they will take longer to build, so so there's that. Yeah, they are 20 sticks. Gosh, do I have enough sticks though? Well, they will gather more. Look, we have a bottle fence. Yay! I will probably use these a lot, because I think they're so pretty. Oh god, I thought they... I chopped down the tree that I wanted for my craft and I was like, Wah! <laughs> Oh, that was a small heart attack. <laughs> right, I'm going to let them build in peace. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Getting there slowly but surely. It's a bit cozy with uh, this small clutch of heart, heart system of everything. Look how cool the, the awnings are kind of like going into each other. That's really cool. I would love to spend a, a holiday here camping with luxury. <coughs> need, I need my uh, luxury. You know, I need a, a shop nearby. <laughs> I'm not going to forage my own food. I did that when I was young. My parents taught me survival when I was young. And I hated every moment of it, but I knew how to survive. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. I want luxury when I go camping, that's for sure. <laughs> so I've added more of the fence. And I'm going to put these by the entrances. Because that looks so cool. Can I not do that? Sure, I'll have one on each. There you go. And that's it. Now that you know when you have enough housing, you kind of have enough of everything for your tribe, it tends to go a little bit slow. But uh, we are basically waiting for the few items that we can't build yet. The new lithic ground has is one of them. You need roughly 50%. Roughly 50% to build it. Uh, everything is percent based so what you can see is each square is 20% so you uh, 20 40 uh, 45 
no, 20, 40, 50. So I like 10 coffee and maths. <laughs> no joke, no joke. This is how I really am with maths. Complete and utter schmuck. <laughs> you really can't take me anywhere. Okay, so what else do we like? We like these. We can see them. That means they are in our grasp. So we just need food processing and we need, look at that, that one demands 60 architecture to have a, to be able to build. Mm, that's luxury. How much do we lack on this one? Lack quite a bit of stone working and also we need 60% architecture. Well, I can understand that because it is quite intricate with carvings and stuff and it's like, no layman can really do that, can it? You need to know what you're doing, so I guess that's fair. Uh, we also lack these. They will come with the woodworking. Especially now that we are building a ton of fences. There will be increase in woodworking. But I don't think I will ever be able to afford these. Each section takes 12 logs. That's a no, I think. But I might have to rethink when raiding comes because we do need good defenses don't we this is something i never use you're supposed to use it to clear you know to clear an area of absolutely everything there is so it's kind of like a, a i don't know what to call it a clear task tribe that is uh, static you know it always keeps it clear so it has a purpose it's just i i never use it <coughs> right get people oh yeah oh no I put them on each on one on the inside and one on the outside I shouldn't really do that should I I'll put them both on the outside <laughs> that wasn't so good was it let's put it proper properly there you go <laughs> right year four summer do we have any more pregnant people no they are having a small break in having babies constantly which i don't mind because the food is uh, going rather hot cakes it's a lot of food a lot of food going okay let's uh, i need to remember to place down the, uh, the bench for the workers for the crafters i think i'm going to place it up again no it's cozier under the tree isn't it it's really cool under the tree Maybe I can have a double one. Look at that. That's quite nice. Let's do that. Well, they need a place to sit, you know? At least until the roundhouse comes. Then they will go into the roundhouse. Yep. Oh, I just logged back on as my tribe leader died of old age thank you for your years let's have a look at the new leader let me see he's a bit dim but he's a big guy he's got a lot of health so he's a bit dim yeah a little bit so that also explains a little bit why there is so little progression on any of his knowledges I'm a little bit surprised he managed to learn as many as he did though because I'm pretty sure uh, he did not have food processing, weaving or woodworks when the tribe was created. I think he only had these two. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I actually cannot remember. But um, Circle of Life, it is what it is. The menhirs are coming along nicely and if you look at them you can already see some faintly some of the handprints and if you look closer and know how to count you can see that what how many births do two births how many people okay here we go again i just had three babies and two more are pregnant i'm not even paying attention to it oh <gasps> Are you serious? Look how much hunting we lost. Hunting skill we lost when we lost our leader. Because we couldn't manage to keep up the skills 
due to that we would be hunting ourselves to complete utter extinction of all the animals. So it was basically just a, a matter of time before the hunting would fall down. But now that our leader died, he died with uh, a few percentage of the skills that he had because he was the ultimate knowledge holder. And we just have to accept that and keep trotting on. It is what it is. It was a choice we made. We made the choice to only hunt the boars and leave the rest. So now we lost those. So this is generational loss and this is how it's working. If you don't do stuff and people die with their skills, then you lose them. That's how it is. The same in real life. It's the same as it has been since the dawn of man. If you don't teach away your skills, they will follow you when you die. Back to this. What you can see, if it's not too far away, I uh, think, it's, think it's okay, is that they actually have six fingers and not five. I find that adorable because it is unique to ancient cities. So there's that. I accept. I'm going to make one more straw hut because uh, we suddenly had like six babies. Poof. And I didn't even notice. So there's that. Um, I'm probably just going to place it roughly here. The point is to try to make it closer than these pelt huts because then they will go to the better quality huts before they go to the pelt huts. So I really, really need to put it closer than the pelt huts somehow. You see, that ought to do it. That's another six spots for people. Another six babies. So I just realized that I missed that we could actually build storehouses. I must have been so engulfed in something else that I absolutely just ignored it somehow. Let's uh, get this one around here somewhere. I think we're only going to focus on putting fish in there for now. Um, I think that is the, the only thing that we sometimes get a lot of, that we can defend actually using a storehouse for there's basically no need to build storehouses for any food that comes in that is on such small amounts that they will only last a few days before people have eaten them up so there's no point in building more migrants let's see what they oh what she has she looks really nice, doesn't she? She has, uh, she's skillful, but it also, it's a bit slow. It's only a bit slow. I think we should take her. I can't leave her out there for the boars to nibble on her. She needs a place to be. She needs a family. And now she's with us. So what are we actually lacking now? We are still lacking the Neolithic roundhouse which needs 50% and we are at 40, a little bit over 40 actually. We lack these three. And we do lack the large men here, or the normal men here. And these of course. But we do have everything else. So we're not suffering, there's no suffering going on, everybody should be alright. Of course, those with uh, poor grades of fitness and will tend to complain. Nothing new under the sun. They will just keep complaining. I'm not going to lower the workhouse. I can't do it. We can't afford it, basically. That's it. There is in not even any discussion. So, yeah, now we are working towards getting this one. I find this one to be the most important one. And, of course... The men here, the normal men here, the Neolithic men here. I am going to make a fence around this one as well. Try to get it roughly the same as that one, roughly, roughly. And then I'm going to place the round pole fences here. So those are proper, proper sturdy fences. They're not tall, but they're proper sturdy. Right, look at these. Slowly but surely they are becoming larger and larger and larger. Look how you can see each section 
of size as they are building it. We can do so much cool with these things. We can pause them at a certain size and then create a lot of stuff. I'm going to have a lot of fun with these men here. A lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so the storehouse is done and we are going to give it to the dried fish. That is anything that is defensible to do at the moment. We shall see if we might change it when we're having some winter feasts later. Because I am planning to do some winter feasting of hazelnuts and mushrooms, if there are plenty in this area, of course. The seed might not have a lot of it, so we will find out. My tribe leader is again dying. This is the thing with having age and charisma to be the deciding factor. It tends to be the elder ones. As uh, when you grow older, you do increase your charisma. So they tend to always win the fight. So, and of course he has maxed out absolutely everything that he was allowed to max out. So, which in turn also means that uh, my workforce is halved. And I have a lot of people just hanging around in camp. So there's a lot of um, lacking workforce. But it is part of the game, isn't it? It's uh, part of the challenges that you are being thrown when you are playing the game for more than a few years. So I just hope that it is someone who is um, a bit stronger so that I can uh, up my labor age a little bit at least. I mean, everyone has a task. Everyone can do a chore. Thank you for your years, Mr. Leader. And now we have a woman leader. Um, yeah, no, she's okay as well. She's good. Let me have a look at her. She's beautiful, by the way. She is slow. Not too bad. Uh, she's so slow um, that she hasn't managed to teach herself anything. I wonder if she has been locked in a gathering group for, for food. Basically, since she immigrated to us quite a while back. Because you can see she's in a, a gathering group. That could be it. That does make sense. It's actually the only thing that makes sense. Because there's no way that you should not teach yourself skills when you're just being slow. She just made herself the, the tribe leader. Of course she's got brains. Ish. Ish. <laughs> She is strong though. Smashes things, yeah. <laughs> you can sure be the one who smashes things. Fine. She's idolized. Now this is why she's absolutely idolized. People love her. Two bits. Okay, fine. <laughs> we all love you. <laughs> it's so good even though you don't have zero knowledge. <laughs> I'm going to add a few stone wall fences around this area here just to uh, see how much repairs it takes and how quickly it needs repairs I'm going to leave a, a spot open as well so people can walk through so these fences are not for protection they are for the aesthetics and also to see how I can balance my workforce with regards to how much fencing I can have before it becomes a a chore or before it comes a hindrance to keeping up with the uh, income of things in the tribe so just testing ahead to see how it's gonna become maybe we can have stone fences everywhere if they are not uh, demanding too much uh, repairs too quickly but for now, the uh, the other fences uh, seem to be pretty much spot on with regards to when they will need repairs. So I think I think the the, the devs managed to to hit the nail on the head. I just need to check out the uh, the stone fencing as well to be sure. Ooh, look how far they have come. Look, you see the yellow there when the moon hits it and the sun hits it sometimes. It's like it's a little bit self-illuminating, and it's so cool. 
Yeah, Tribe is doing good. And people keep having babies. I'm now up to 72 people. I have re-logged this game a few times because I haven't been able to play non-stop, obviously. So when the computer is off, then the game is not on. But when I come back, they still get babies. I have good seed no matter what I do. <laughs> I'm not sure we're even going to manage 10 years with this speed. Look at it. As soon as someone has a baby, someone else gets pregnant. So <laughs> I have quite a few elderly now though, look at this, 20. So I have lost a few from old age, from the start. No, that was in the tribe from start. And there will be a, a fairly even decline of the elder and then it will go up and then it will go down. So yeah, nothing that is not expected. I'm finishing the fence in this area and everything is stone and I think we're just going to do normal fence on this one and then I have the wattle on this one over here and uh, I like watching what people are preferring to eat the good thing about the food preference is that you will even out what is being taken of the food instead of just only one thing at the time until it's all out and then they go for the next uh, also, I have noticed that the kids do not uh, inherit necessarily the taste from their parents. They have their own taste and there are so many, I'm not even kidding, in the majority of my tribes, everybody loves honey. It must be because it's like sugary and sweet. Um, they also tend to be very fond of hazelnuts. Nobody likes my roots, which is why I only have people coming home with 20 of them because they won't eat them unless it's absolute famine. Or if I micromanage and close off everything else but the roots. I could do that, we could do that. It is a way to, to manage it, but it is micromanagement, which is something that the devs do not want to add too much of. I prefer it, to be honest. I actually quite like it. But in order to feel that you have a certain control you need to cover all the aspects of how some of your avatars can behave and it takes a little bit of time playing ancient cities in order to get properly into that because there is so many aspects to the game that needs to be taught needs to be learned before you can get a full picture of what exactly is going on so it's not done in two hours it's also not like we don't have any options to force people to eat certain foods. We do have the configuration that this allows people to help themselves with this and this type of food. So if it gets bad, like they are, if you have a tribe that has so much united taste that they only go for this and this and this, you can just close them off when the other the foods that you have are starting to become too decayed. And then they will eat it and then you can open it up again. You know, and, and as the babies are born, they will have different tastes. They don't necessarily inherit the, the parents' taste. And that is uh, opening up for a, a highly dynamic um, menu <laughs> of what people like. So that's good. I'm going to add the normal fence around these. I mean, they all have fences around them and different fences. So let's just keep up the tradition. Oops. Yeah, I'll fix that afterwards. Later, later data. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can I sneak one to the side and then like that? Yeah, let's do that. A little bit sneaky. Well, we can't move the stones, so there goes. Maybe later we can use, uh, you know, proper sledgehammers to knock off the stones from the ground so we can build stuff where exactly where we want it we will find out okay so the winter feasting is there and i've locked the fish they cannot take out the dried fish they will get it when spring comes because then there is no more mushrooms and there is no more hazelnuts and i have of course turned down the work spots Oh, it looks like a heart almost. Oh, that's so nice. Look, it's a little heart. Oh. So, so I, yeah, I've taken down the work spots in the fishing group so it shan't be 
too much. It takes in 500 kilos, no 300 kilos. So we've almost reached that now. The fish is not a kilo per fish, it's more like 750 grams. Yes, I have done some testing on this, <laughs> so I know roughly there and thereabouts. It's difficult to do these testings because <coughs> they are all not uh, same weight, everything. Everything is not same weight, so... Right, uh, so when I'm adding more things than just the fences, you can see that uh, there's always too little stone, but I, I do not want to use more workforce. I will just take time to to build it instead of having always the materials at the hand. This is quite normal for me to, to have it halfway built and uh, a lot of the materials are... You have to go far to get them. The logistics is the taking quite a bit of the time. So they only gather stones for half the day instead of the entire day. So there will be less stones because of course they've peeled up everything that is close to camp. So there's that. Okay, so now let's see how long the mushrooms and the hazelnuts are lasting. They should last well into spring. They should last so long. Look at the amount. Look at the amounts. Seriously, I think I might have to cool it. I have to cool it down for next year. Although it will be a small percentage of diminishment. Diminishing of all the food. Because every year it slowly, slowly diminishes. And then you, in the end, have to migrate. And that's how it works in real life as well. It's like the farmers one day, when they turn their soil and leave it. And then they plant something else. So, yeah. Okay, so now we can see a precise constitution of when it needs repairs. It takes a really long time for it to need repairs. It's many, many, many sleeps. It's, um, it's actually really really nice to see so this is a perfect tweak this is fantastic i don't think anyone will have a leg to stand on if they try to say it, it that they need too much repairs but they do need a nine stick per section so i think if we are going to use this a lot we also need to have a high amount of sticks in the camp which is fine, sticks is a common resource. I mean, if you are running out of sticks, you have done something wrong. Absolutely. So if it comes to roughly half of where it's decayed, you see the brown circle, if it comes like halfway, you can go down on what you're gathering, because then you are overproducing a little bit. It's not like it's life and death to overproduce some of the common materials, but there's no need. You know, there's absolutely no need. All you need to do is to calculate what you are using per year after year one. It's idiotic to calculate on year one because it is so much stress with building and everything. And everything is increased in usage. All the materials are super increased. It is after you're done with all the initial building that you can start doing more precise calculations that will uh, last year after year. So... <clears throat> you will find out quickly based on how you are building, how you are playing, what levels to put all your resources on. So yeah, I'm really happy about the fences. That is uh, spot on. That makes it easier for us to actually be allowed to have all these beautifications and stuff. I also added a little bit more of the pelt huts because people just keep having kids. And uh, I want the roundhouses to occupy here and I can't sustain more than seven or eight straw huts, big straw huts and at the same time have a, a, a good income of all the resources. One would think that when one have almost 90 people that it would be enough but uh, 27 of those are elder and 18 of them are children so a, a good percentage is not working. And uh, another good percentage must be focusing on food income. So there's that. So yeah, look at my heart fence. It looks right, quite nice, doesn't it? You know, even though it's just a normal plain fence, it is really nice. I wouldn't mind having that in my garden, to be honest. But then again, I also want this. Lily wants, Lily wants, I want everything. I want everything. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to see what, maybe I should do a round pole here. They are much heavier though, and do demand quite a bit more material when they do need repair. We'll see, we'll see what we decide. 
uh, something that I get quite a few questions about is actually the knowledge uh, regarding the roundhouses and things that are greyed out. If we are going to look at the Neolithic roundhouse, let's just do it from the start. You need proficiency in order to unlock more objects to build. For example, this roundhouse demands 50% architecture knowledge, but it also demands Neolithic culture influence of 20%. So we do have all nine knowledges at creation, but of course with varying random proficiency. So if the seed is not granting you enough proficiency to build this object, you will have to work hard for it or, you know, wait for migrants to bring their knowledge proficiency to you. Uh, most objects, however, do not demand a certain culture as they all are congruent in both cultures that we have in the game. But we need to remember that some objects will need a specific culture in order to be built. So if you hover over your objects in their respective panels to see the exact requirements, you will see if there is added any kind of culture requirements, you will need this culture, even if you have, for instance, enough architecture to build it. And also remember that all these calculations are percentage based. So one square is 20%. And another thing that requires a certain cultural uh, influence is, of course, the, the Neolithic men here. Hence the word Neolithic. And this one uh, can have any because you can build them in both cultures. So this is basically what these things mean. You don't need to have both in the small men here. But you must have at least one in order to build it. You only need one. So there, hope it clarifies a little bit. Also now that we are going into spring, spring is upon us, I have removed the restrictions on the fish. So yeah, we did roughly right in the amount we got and people ate because there were not a lot else. So you can see that they have also been eating the roots because maybe they hate nuts, who knows? They hate nuts more than they hate roots. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to spy and see who actually that is and ask him what the rest of his life is like. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and there are a few self dead animals. Yeah. We might have to take down some of the peltots because if there is not more pelts coming in from self dead animals, we will suffer on all the others. So I will just uh, almost say cannibalize each one of them to repair the others because you will get all your pelts back, all your leather back when you dismantle it. So that is excellent. And also the, uh, the fine sticks. The fine sticks seems to always be too little of because uh, there is a constant production of tools to reach always the limit that you have set. None of my limits are idiotic. None of them are overproducing in the slightest. Not even the bifaces that I have 50 of because I have almost 90 people. So it is defendable. It is justifiable to build that many. So um, the bigger you grow, the more you need. It is what it is. And our first man here is completed. Let's go have a look. This one. Look, 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 look. That is awesome. Look at it. <laughs> I love it. It's so nice. Those of you six fingered hands in the back, you can clearly see the six fingers now, can't you? Especially see it on the yellow one. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. I have. 32 elder people the baby boom of previous years is now coming to bite me in my peep yep I'm gonna have a huge loss of people over the next year or so if you're thinking one year is five of theirs and they um, retire roughly at between 67 and 70, which means they will max live another five years, max. So within those five years for them, which is one year for me, I will lose a lot of those who are elderly. 
not all of them of course because some of them are just turned 50 and some are 55 and some are 60 so it's not going to be like 32 people gone every night it will be over a, um, a year so but it's nothing not normal about that you know as new babies are born elders die it is what it is it you know circle of life so it is expected and working as intended oh I have two ready now two are done we are basically getting there girls if I ever if I can manage to stay the same locality until we get the Neolithic men here I'm gonna put one in the middle here five thousand stones dude that's gonna take some time <sighs> a, a small thing that not many people perhaps are aware of is that when people are helping themselves with food from for instance a pit or a basket or wherever really the amount that is showing in your panel will not go down until they have actually eaten up the food so even though they are taking it from the pit for instance and walking to somewhere to sit and eat it the number you can see will still be the same until the food has been eaten handy to know <laughs> so we just tipped over to year nine and uh, we don't have a lot of food and people are not happy but um, yeah and I also lost quite a few elder and uh, the stone fences finally needed a repair it only took like a really long time and my wonder is coming along nicely they are arguing with the stone fences about who should have the stone nothing unexpected in the slightest look look how many of these are, are, are all at the same time I already lost a ton okay so now they are dying one by one by one I only had four die in one go two sleeps later I had three dying and now I'm gonna have three within two sleeps again so it's like yeah but that is because we had this baby boom earlier isn't it we had like seven babies in less than a year seriously so yeah so there's another two that just died and there's another two about to die she has a few slips left he will die tomorrow so now I'm down to 88 even though we've had babies all the time and uh, adults are becoming elder and children are becoming adults so it is this natural dip up and down and it is kind of keeping my population stable I could because I don't think we can handle more because the food already is from hand to mouth it, it, there is not a lot of surplus so we um, I guess we should be happy that we're not having too much uh, population growth at this point so the, there is a nice balance the, the, the game knows what it's doing but we've almost been here a decade though and uh, we have kind of built quite a bit haven't we we have run out of fine raw stone because uh, each locality only has a set amount and we have always built 10 stone axes so when we're out of stone axes and we cannot get logs in any speed because there's no point having a lumberjack if you can't give him access or her you can't chop anything so people have to wander about and find logs not sure how that's going to go with the fireplace although it takes a while before the fireplace need repairs we are still going to need logs on a regular basis so we just have to see how long we can stay I was hoping to manage to finish the project um, but since it's only stragglers doing the project oh and another one went yeah oh gosh since it's only the stragglers who doesn't have any other chore to do the the, um, the project there won't be many working on it because the, the people are needed elsewhere I feel there's always a certain lack of something 
It does make sense though that you will spend much more time getting the same materials that you did for instance year two because we are after all in almost in year 10 and people will have to go further away to get the same resources meaning they will not come home with the same resources because some of that time will be lost to logistics. So in the end when people are basically scouring the edges of the map it is time to migrate really. <laughs> Gosh, look at all those elderly people. There's like six or seven around in my camp of people who are on their last days. There will be another little dip. And the pregnancies have, have kind of dwindled quite far down, which I don't necessarily mind, of course. Because we're already too many <laughs> for the amount of food we have. Look how many old people I have. Look at them. I have 37 idle because they're too old to work and they're too young to work because my tribe leader is now so old that she has put everything on absolute max restrictions. So basically this is what it looks like and I can do absolutely nothing. So I have to accept it the way it is. There is a plus side to having it like this though. The plus side is that the elder who has a lot of proficiency in the knowledges, they are giving space to the younger ones, to those with less knowledges, to catch up with them. So the younger ones are now working in their spot, in their work spot, meaning they will learn up to their to the elders skill level so the skills won't be lost. And that is a really positive thing even though I'm not particularly fond of having almost half my workforce not working. This is one of the curses with having a tribe leader, you know, that is so old that everything is going down and down and down. And being empathic, the tribe leader will set all the policies down because the way he or she feels will also be how she's deciding for the tribe as well via her own feelings. So uh, it does make sense. But it is sometimes quite a hindrance to get some kind of efficiency when it is like this. And we are struggling so bad with food. I'm not sure we can manage another year here. And we are also so close to getting the roundhouse. There's just a small few percentages left. And then we have it. But all the people that are not working. So many that are not working. But uh, like I said, the, the younger ones are then taking their place and by that they are not dying with the skills. They are being taught further to the other generations and that is always good. So that is perfect. Thank you for your years. We appreciate it. Who is our new leader? She doesn't look too bad at all, does she? Not too bad at all. She is mostly a hunter, which is fine. Yeah, this is good. We'll see if I can put up the... Uh... Oh, finally. Ta-da! Now I can have more people work. <laughs> I've lost so many elder people. I've, my workforce is like ridiculously low in comparison to what it actually should be when everyone who's able-bodied is working. So here's to a small change. And of course my leader is... Oh, oh hello! Look what we can make! Time for roundhouses! This also means that I will have to start gathering our horde of mud you need 750 mud to build a roundhouse we better get to it so I guess we should uh, start with taking away everything that takes a ton of straw because um, we are basically going to replace the majority of them so we're going to need 750 that's uh, quite a number there, isn't it? It's 
quite a number. Right, then we need people to start gathering. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, we also need reed. 75 reed. Where are you people? There you are. So you guys need to go get a little bit more. There you go. Oh, did I put the fire? I didn't mean to do that. No, that wasn't it. That was not it. Foo. There you go. Right, so now we can just wait. Um, I am going to place the first one right here, I think right in front of the sitting stone and I want to place one roughly here as well I think yep also notice that the icon has changed it is now showing a roundhouse where it previously showed the Mesolithic tent it is now showing a Neolithic roundhouse that's quite neat isn't it Okay, so now I just placed down the roundhouse and we are just lacking logs uh, because uh, we can't chop down trees anymore because we don't have any more fine raw stone. So we are out of axes. So as soon as this one is up, I think that's going to be it for this, uh, for this locality and also the, my project is almost ready, almost done. So I uh, scavenged the benches as well to get their logs and also replaced the big fireplace with two smaller ones because they do not use logs, they use sticks. So yeah, not enough logs. How many do we lack now? We lack three. Right, that shouldn't be too long. And uh, the uh, gatherers of clay will make sure that clay is kept to 750 until it's needed reed is only 10 away from being 75 which is what it needs and which is also what it uh, needs to have as repair and maintenance material I wish it was mud though because mud there's so much mud we are drowning in mud literally <laughs> this is where our journey ends for now we have had 12 years of fun, but also hard work to survive long enough to build the Neolithic Roundhouse in the year 3078 BC. We did manage to complete the Lilyhenge, barely, with 8,000 stones carried on the backs of our tribe members. They are truly the ascendants of the hardcore Mesolithic Hobbledehoy. What I'm sitting back with is the indubitably a feeling of enrichment to the game but with some hardship ahead if you're not prepared to change some of your strategies without either manipulating the game or using mods to cheat your resources in one way or another. I personally never play with cheats as they would make me unable to provide accurate results in any testing of the game, but each to their own. I do find Neolithic quite a bit easier to play with regarding gaining knowledge. Your tribe is larger and hence more people who can work on their skills. However, Mesolithic still has the alluring charm of hardcore difficulty for long-term survival, pending temperature, and of course also luck in migrant seeds and definitely pregnancies. As we have just experienced, too many births is not good either, and we did struggle quite a bit to keep people alive and happy after year 9 or so in this locality. The knowledge system is well thought out and with some of the tweaks are working rather well. There might actually be a few more tweaks incoming which is pending the feedback that you players are giving. There are still some struggles though in order to justify mass producing huts in order to increase architecture. And I did catch myself overproducing at times in order to speed things up. So what we basically need to work on is our patience rather than our cheating skills. But of course, since the game can be played in many, many ways, it's up to each and every one how you wish to play it. There is a lot of changes in the patch and some of them are so worked into the system that they are at times easy to miss, such as how people divide tasks between themselves based on skills and also how they pick their food with regards to standing in lines for favorites or moving along to next food type for efficiency and speed. 
The dogs are certainly a much wished for addition to ancient cities and now we are probably all not only eagerly awaiting the ability to tame them but also adamantly refusing to actively hunt them. I personally do not wish to hunt them but then again maybe my tribe has not been hungry enough yet to avoid it. Tougher times will test our resolve for sure. The human characteristics are amazing and very accurate. I love the combination of darker skin with the bright blue eyes. And the mesolithic clothing is just so stylish and goes along so well with their hairstyles. We can also notice the differences in the characteristics as we get closer to our own timeline. And I do find the accuracy of how our ancestors looked very attractive in the game. With this patch, we have been offered yet another way to play the game with exciting incentives such as quests for knowledge and also achievements on Steam. The intricacy of the knowledge system might seem daunting at first, but with some practice you will gain proficiency in the understanding of it. See what I did there? <laughs> the next patch is weather and agriculture implementations and I will eagerly await thunderstorms. Thank you so much to everyone who has participated in this journey with me. I have enjoyed it tremendously and I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. I know I said it wouldn't be as long as the Mesolithic video, but uh, yet here we are. My next playthrough video will be about a tribe that is testing Mother Nature by trying to migrate from Doggerland in 10,000 BC before the ocean makes it into an island and they are trapped forever. If they survive, they will migrate through the rest of Europe in search of new adventures with exciting stories of their perilous travels to share with all they meet on their journey through the millennia. Until then, have fun and take care. <laughs> <laughs>